And finally, the reason that I was so delighted to be invited to Detroit is because this is the citadel of our corporate image. We must defend that image. And with a proper defense, sales will follow. It is a goal we can meet that must be met. And with your help, we will succeed. Bravo. Thanks. Uh, is the audio OK, the volume all right? Coming through loud and clear, even in the back. Great. Thanks very much for your assistance. Just checking the public address system. I do a lot of speaking in my work, and wherever I go, I try to check things out before the audience arrives. The size of the room, the seating arrangement, and especially those all-important aids to public speaking, the microphone, the lectern, and my visual aids. You really can't be too well prepared. I learned that lesson the hard way. Several years ago, when I was still a novice speaker, I was asked to address a sales convention. I worked hard preparing that speech. Really burned the midnight oil. When the big day came, I was really nervous, but I was ready. I thought. Thank you. Are you all set? Uh, yeah, I think I've got everything under control. Um, where's the easel? Easel? Yeah, for my visual aids. Uh, we don't have an easel. I, I was in trouble already. Uh, I'd assumed there'd be an easel to hold my flip chart, but there wasn't, and it was too late to find one. Well, maybe I can prop them up on the lectern. Uh, lectern? Don't tell me you don't have a lectern. Larry, you didn't tell me you needed a lectern. Who so would have I... supposed that you would not? No easel, no lectern. What was I to do? Then I had another thought. Surely someone had made arrangements for a microphone. What about the microphone? Microphone, that we have. Phil, that's a hand mic. I've got my hands full now. How can I handle this and that? I need a stand or a boom or a lectern or an easel or something. I can't go on. I don't have to tell you what that speech was like. This, a uh, salesman must try to, must take drastic action to uh, turn the problem around. Uh, even with the hastily arranged help with the visual aids, visual materials here. that speech was uh, a disaster. Salesman's earnings have fallen drastically below the 150,000 mark. Uh, who? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that painful experience taught me to find out as much as I can about the speaking situation before I have to speak. If I need a lectern or a microphone, an easel, or any other speaking aid, I make sure it's available well beforehand. Of course, it's important to know how to use those speaking aids. Take the lectern, for example. Lecterns come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but they all serve the same purpose, to hold the speaker's notes where he can easily see them. Unfortunately, some speakers use the lectern in other ways. We the novice speaker often uses the lectern as a lifesaver, like a piece of driftwood in a tempest. He clings to it in desperation, as if his very survival were at stake. The school scene for a long time. I. Then there's the other extreme, the uh, percussive persuader. He uses the lectern as a drum on which he forcefully hammers home his message. While this style of delivery never fails to grab the audience's attention, it uh, can have a wearing effect on the lectern and listener alike. Sometimes the stress on both becomes unbearable. A good speaker never uses the lectern in a way that distracts from his speech. He doesn't grip it, lean on it, or slouch over it. He doesn't move it around, drum his fingers on it, or pummel it with his fists. He simply centers himself squarely behind it and speaks to his audience. He uses the lectern as it was intended, as a tool, 
which liberates his hands and arms for gesturing. To the people then and to us today. He was saying he much rather have liberty, and if he could not have liberty, he would rather die. Actually, the lectern presents few problems for most public speakers. But that can't be said for this speaking aid. Used properly, a microphone enables a speaker to communicate comfortably with a large audience. But use it improperly, and it can become a tool of torture, inflicting your audience with a variety of physical and mental torments. Therefore, I suggest the student council should appoint a committee to This common form of torment, called feedback, occurs when the speaker fails to stand within the microphone's optimum range, and the volume on the public address amplifier has been set too high. In this situation, some of the sound from the loudspeakers feeds back into the PA system via the microphone. This overloads the system and causes the painful screech. The speaker should move into the mic's optimum range, usually about 12 to 18 inches from the mic. And the volume on the PA system must be turned down accordingly. To help solve this problem once and for all, Thank you. A speaker who gets too close to the microphone subjects the audience to another form of audio anguish. It sounds like this. The real problem. The supervisor and you as supervisor must be prepared to deal with employee complaints promptly and in a rapid fashion. Equally tormenting are the sounds produced by a speaker who won't keep his mitts off the mic. How can we cope with those minor annoyances that constantly rub us the wrong way and, and drag us down into despair and, and cause anxiety. But perhaps the worst agony of all is inflicted by the speaker who ignores or forgets the microphone altogether. There's nothing that will take the place of hard work. And number two, the willingness to take a chance. You've got to take chances. And number three, you've got to be able to delegate the A good the speaker would rather communicate with his audience than torture it. So he gives careful attention to microphone technique. So I'll give you tonight's main speaker, Dean Gerald Steffens. The experienced speaker adjusts the microphone to the correct height before he starts speaking. Should he have trouble, he simply asks the chairman for help. He's careful to place the microphone so the audience can see his entire face above it. He knows that lip movements and facial expressions Chairman. help his audience understand what he's saying. Ladies and gentlemen. He stands comfortably erect and speaks into the microphone in a clear, strong voice. He usually evaluates his clarity and volume by listening to his voice as it's broadcast from the speaker system. However, in a field house, stadium, or a large auditorium, the sound reverberation may be so distracting that a speaker must try to ignore his amplified voice. Of this, of this great, great university. university. So, so as, as you leave here, here tonight, tonight to pursue, to pursue that, that vision, vision, do so, so with, with the well In this situation, it's best to concentrate on what you're saying as you speak to avoid being distracted by your voice coming from the loudspeakers. Realize that, that your education, education must, must continue, continue all the days, the days of your life, of your life ever, ever building, building on, on the, foundation. the foundation. Regardless of the speaking situation, your goal should always be to communicate with your audience. That's why if you are ever unsure of your listener's ability to hear you, Ask. This is our first class. Your audience will appreciate this simple course. act of courtesy. Can you hear me okay in the back? If you can hear me, raise your hand. They'll also appreciate the courtesy you show by turning away from the mic to cough or clear your throat. The experienced speaker knows the microphone is a valuable speaking tool, and he lets this tool do most of his work for him. For example, to emphasize a point, he need not step back and raise his voice. He can lean forward and lower it. Thoreau spoke of it long ago. As Thoreau once said, it takes two to speak the truth. The one to speak and another to hear. 
A good speaker is especially mindful of the use of his microphone when he employs visual aids. Otherwise, he might commit this common mistake. The view through the head-up display is shown on this illustration. As you can see... There are several simple solutions to this problem. You can place the visual aids closer to the microphone. As you can see, there is a circular area aiming... Have an assistant handle the visual aids. ...is shown on this illustration. As you can see, there is a circular aiming... Or use a microphone that permits freedom of movement, such as a lavalier mic. As you can see, there is a circular aiming reference. And the target in this example... Although a microphone helps your audience hear what you're saying, it's often more important for them to see what you're saying, and that's the reason for visual aids. Visuals help an audience grasp information they might not comprehend by speech alone. They can reveal what is normally invisible or hidden, make facts and figures meaningful, or illustrate complicated processes or relationships. A good visual can be worth a thousand words, but no one benefits from a drawing that's too small to be seen a slide that's out of focus, or a chart that's too crowded or complex. And using a meaningless, unnecessary visual does nothing but make a speaker look ridiculous. What then is the solution, you may ask? Well, I'll tell you. The solution is to increase sales. Now, that's right. Increase sales, and you all know how to do that. The way you increase sales is to make sure that... The point is, use visuals only when they really aid the audience's understanding. If they add nothing to what you're saying, don't use them. Increase sales. When you do use a visual aid, make it large enough for the entire audience to see clearly. Use broad, heavy lines and different colors to make distinctions clear from a distance. Keep your visuals simple and uncluttered. Don't try to put too much information on one visual. Instead, simplify your material by using a series of illustrations. Product knowledge, selling skills, and attitude. Three elements in what I think of as the sales triangle. Let's examine them each in turn. First, product knowledge. What you should know about what you are selling. Product knowledge and Flip terms, charts are a particularly effective aid when you're speaking to smaller audiences. Besides adding interest to your speech, they can list your main points, so you don't need a written speech or note cards. Long-lasting and price. How does the product compare with those of your competitors? Also, the physical movement involved in flipping the pages and gesturing helps relieve the tension that often causes stage fright. When addressing a large audience, you'll have to transfer your visuals to slides, film strips, or transparencies for projection. These materials permit enlargements for easy viewing. A good speaker never allows a visual aid to become a visual hindrance. He always thinks of the audience and talks to it, not the visual. He glances at the visual only long enough to locate or point out specific information. He then turns back to his audience. A good speaker also keeps all visual aids out of sight until they're needed. Otherwise, they arouse the audience's curiosity and thus hinder communication. For the same reason, he removes or covers visuals when he's finished with them. As you probably realize by now, the proper use of any aid to public speaking, the visual aid, the lectern, the microphone, is largely a matter of common sense. As a matter of fact, you might say the greatest speaking aid you have is right here. By following the examples of good speakers, a very successful year, and I think you're to be commended for your accomplishments, and avoiding the mistakes of the bad, you can become a better speaker and experience the satisfaction that comes from reaching your audience. <laughs>